Hello and welcome to another episode of the Never a Straight Answer podcast. The podcast aims to cover a wide range of topics from conspiracy theories to popular culture and news. I'm your host Gaz and joining me in the studio, well it said if he was a cult leader, they'd run out of Kool-Aid at the first meeting. He's my co-host, Mr. Taylor. Yeah, definitely. I'll kill you all in one day. The dogs just literally just wipe them all out in yeah. one shot. Then rub the wallet. Well, thank you <laughs> and welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Oh, yeah. So, welcome along, you new listeners, and of course, you repeat offenders. Uh, it's it's going to be a very culty episode this week. It is. I'm I glad love you a good culty. Cultist. Cult, yeah. cult, a cult. Like, is a cult the same as a cult? Cultist. A cultist or a cultist? I don't know. Anyway, oh, we're going to be getting into it. it. We do love a good cult yeah. here on the Never a Straight Answer podcast. We do. Um, from Heaven's Gate to the Jonestown. Oh, uh, yeah. But this week we're going to be talking about um, a cult where at least 100 members of a religious UFO cult mm. went missing in Northern uh, Colombia. Yeah. Oh, yeah um, after serious. they went to um, apparently rendezvous with a spacecraft ooh, ooh. Uh, that they believe would save them from the end of the world and a coming cataclysm. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like cataclysm. It's a any cataclysm. <laughs> yeah, well, now it was like, well, we'll get into it, but well. that's coming up a bit later on in the show. Ooh, yeah. um, so plenty to look forward to, especially um, that, as well as uh, this week's world events um, in NASA News. Yeah. And um, oh. all that's well worth sticking around for. I'm sure yeah. you'll oh. agree. Oh, defo. So, firstly, yeah, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, surrounding cults, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and if you were a cult leader, mm-hmm. yeah, what two items would weird out a cashier if you were to buy them together? Hey. Um, so, you're at a supermarket, yeah? Yeah. You're a cult leader. Right. And you're like... I need to buy a couple you of items. You need to couple of buy a couple of bits. What would what do you think the those two items would be and why do you think they'd what would they weird, how would they weird out the cashier? Oh uh, I don't know, something like a chainsaw. It's like one of those, it's like and when you rope. see murderers and they come in and they've got like, you know, a shovel. Yeah. And yeah. And, 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 a and, knife. You know, and and a book and a bucket and a basket and <laughs> And um, a hacksaw. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like red flags, red flags. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking, so you're just going with bog standard, like, rope and fucking, like, that yeah, type of tackle. rope and a couple of knives or some shit like that. Yeah. I don't think that would freak them out. I think those two things, they go together like like chicken and waffles. That's true, actually. Yeah, you might be right there. Well, what, what would you pick? It'd have to be something, like, really obscure, like a Woman's Weekly and, like... Um, a Woman's Weekly yeah, magazine. Yeah, mag- Woman's Weekly magazine yeah. and, like, I don't know, um, uh, um, f- knows what, what doesn't go with a Woman's Weekly? Uh, bag of Frozen Peas. <laughs> I don't know. Again, it's like... Yeah, but that ain't freaky, is it? It doesn't freak anything out. No. I mean, it's like, did you know, with, like, with the Nectar Point card, you know, like, people yeah. used to say, like, oh... And they, I think they do it on Peep Show. There's a joke on Peep Show where he goes... You know, um, I, I, you know, we haven't got a cat. Why have you bought cat food? And he's like, yeah, do you know, just to fuck freak with the nectar inspectors, you know? Oh, well, yeah, because they yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah, they yeah, think, think who are these guys? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Buying random, weird, obscure items. I don't know. Mm, well, yeah. listeners at home, what yeah. two items we'll would it. you buy to freak if you were a cult leader to freak out the establishment? A Kool Aid and That's a jug. All- Gasoline uh, <laughs> and, and a bedding. Yeah, no, 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 no. Bedding. no. Uh, here we go. I, I've got the two perfect items here. Oh, yeah, right. let's wave. If I was a cult that. leader yeah. and I was at the supermarket and I yeah. wanted to freak yeah. out the cashier, I would buy um, a packet of Kool Aid and a packet of rat poison. Well, that's what. Yeah, but I thought of that before and I thought, you know what? Nah, that's too obvious. You Obviously, know what I mean? it's like I thought about that before yeah. and not today, like another time during my shop. Well, you know, whenever <laughs> you're going to uh, poison some rats, you do get a bit sweat, you know what I mean? And so you do you need, need a drink. refreshing yeah. drink, yeah. yeah. You know, well, keep I, hydrated. If you're going on a rat kill, a rat hunt. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, anyway. You're busy. Um, well, cult, cults are cults. We'll be getting yeah. into it. Oh, yeah. um, but. Um, before we do, what have you been up to this week? Me, anything, been, anything interesting? Been murdering rats? Uh, no. Did you get on a first? No, no, I'm I'm afraid I didn't. No, I've been looking into uh, law again. Oh, uh, right, okay. Into, any um, any in, laws in particular? Anything that's going to actually help our, us in a, in a worst-case scenario? Our rights and stuff and like, um, like kind of... Um, 
uh, stuff to do with birth certificates and like you've been looking money. into this before so, yeah. and how like you know you are a bond and like you know you are set up as a kind of a sort yeah, of business you're a business yeah yeah and uh, well, you know, trust fund, I, I, I trust fund like, but the, yeah. you know, um, you have bonds in your name are basically attached to your birth certificate and your national insurance. Yeah, is it, on right? the stock market. Yeah. And I mean, um, it's weird though. I mean, have you found anything else out about how to access well, this money? <laughs> like, well, I think that's the thing most people would be interested in. That's it. Um, well, it's it's to do with uh, a trust, and basically, as a business, you're a tr- you're uh, you're. You're a trust from your birth certificate. Trust. And you need three people for the trust. Um, you you have to have an executor. So basically, when you sign your name... Yeah, him, but who's the executor? You. Right. The executor is the one who's in charge, but who's looking after everything within uh, uh, within your life, basically. Okay, or, so keeping, keeping you fed and watered and, like, you know... Well, no, everything you buy in that, that will come under your trust. Like... Uh, like we can set up a trust now, yeah. Uh, we oh, need this another person. Way complex. It is, it is, it is. But Come basically, on, well, give, give it works us the skinner. Just give us a gist, because I mean, like you know. Basically, you can um, call yourself an exec- executor whenever you sign anything. Let's say you get a. Um, well, they like do, a fine. don't they? I mean, if when you do a will or whatever, you do, like are executors of wills or things like that, aren't you? Kind of doesn't that mean you just um, you're a business. Well, no, isn't that a recipient, a recipient of something? Yeah, you're the, you're the uh, you're the business runner, basically. You're the one who's okay. in charge of it. Any um, lawyers out there who can maybe share, or solicitors, or some, you know, people with a, a, a really quite good legal background, well, this you could is maybe it. come on the show yeah. and explain this to some us. This, that yeah. would be amazing, actually. Yeah, yeah. If you if you it are that type long... of p- p- person, come on the show because because I'd love to have that sort of legal legal sort of um viewpoint on it and how we can you can maybe utilize that law in your favor because obviously if these bonds and kind of finances that are attached to you yeah then surely the people who that is attached to should and be I know entitled that. to it i know that for a whole i've heard people using these bonds to pay off debts and stuff like that so yeah. i mean I, I don't know how far out the but realms the government of possibility don't want is because if that happens you, don't. you know what i mean and and it all comes down to basically um if you have fines and stuff like stuff like that you don't actually have to pay you send it to um um uh, you you uh, you call yourself an executor and you put your number down and you ask the uh, the fining company to send it to the treasury now the treasury uh, is 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 supposed to be legally supposed to do it and take it out of your fund what you've been earning um, through birth um, but generally they will say no it will go to court and if it goes to court the judge, because you're the executor, the judge has to either agree to it or throw it out of court, which means you have to go to court again and again and again. And now people have tried this stuff I've, I've over and over again. I've heard about people trying it, But yeah. there's little traps there. That's the thing. It's getting it right, not saying the wrong word at the wrong time and having the right pa- paperwork. And that's what I'm looking at at the minute. Okay, well, like I say, if there is anybody out there who does know that law and knows how to kind of yeah. use that, then get in touch because we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of an interesting one yesterday. All right. Yeah, well, but you know, I moved house, right? Oh. So yeah. I'm kind of just getting used to the little bits and pieces, you know, like um, how 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 it operates. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. Don't, you don't get a user manual with, like, you know, proppy. No, it's no, like, no, no. Move in, you, you there, move you go, in there you go. You work out yeah. all the bits. As you if you're go, lucky, yeah. you got a manual for the fridge so, or whatever. Um, it was stupidly early. Yeah, I was expecting my um, my internet to be connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah and all did. those little stupid bits that you're doing. So, like, I took the day off. I'm sat at home, but I've got up really, really early. Yeah, like, and I'm um, just pottering around, and I think, well, quickly take that bin bag out. Right? Yeah, as you do, as yeah, you yeah, do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm still in my pajamas, yeah, like, okay. and and um, no shoes on, right? Oh, so well, I've just whipped out stupid. to put the bin bag in the bin, right? Yeah, and my door shuts behind me. Right? Ding dong! Half past <laughs> fucking five in the morning, yeah, right? Oh, and I'm stuck no. outside, no keys, no phone. 
Oh, oh God! What is that? Oh, 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 right. oh wait, in, no, then. no, some, somebody just moved in there. Yeah, we've got um, crossfeed. We've, we've got some like, in, and you've got chatter. It's yeah. like um, when you get the police band radio kicks in. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so um, locked out of the house, no mm. keys, no phone, nothing. Yeah, and I'm like, shit. And it's been raining. It had well. been raining. I had really soggy socks, right? Oh, so I had to take no. abandon the socks, and then yeah. I'm barefoot, right? Fucking sat outside for about three hours, mate. Ooh. Yeah, right, until I could get my... Uh, Not being warm. Well, landlady to drop the spare key. Oh, yeah. damn, man. <coughs> yeah, I've got a bit of a chill, but... I got in, in the ven- eventually, but, like, do you know when you're, like, um, expecting any sort of workman? Yeah. Yeah, or a parcel or anything like that, and it gives you an estimated time, a window. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you know that you're going to be, like, the back end of that. I'm usually yeah. the back end of yeah. those situations, and um, no, th- th- who should walk up the drive at like exactly eight o'clock in the morning? But the Sky Engineer, oh, and I'm like, no, or the Internet Engineer, sorry, and um, I'm like, I can't get in. <laughs> sorry, like you're gonna have to come you're back have to wait potentially. <laughs> so like, uh, no, he did. God, God, God love him. He came back and sorted it all out. So we've got broadband now. Yay! Yay. So interesting one yesterday. I mean. I've learned a lesson there. Yeah, yeah take right? keys wherever you go. Well, not only that, but put just like, on. you know, put a latch on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, you know. Have you? Have, has anyone else had that? I mean, uh, do, do you, I've never been locked out. Never once. It's the first time I've ever been locked out of my house. Uh, well, there was a situation, yeah, this is when I was younger, man, where, um, like, I was asleep upstairs in my room and my brother locked himself out and he couldn't get in. <laughs> So it ended up being... Well, you were in? Yeah, but I was asleep. Now, at a certain stage, you ain't waking me up. You know what I mean? But if you walk through that door, I'm awake. But, uh, so... So I, did I he break in? It, 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 it ended up opening my window, my top window, That's and crawling was through and over me. Was open. Yeah. Oh, my days. Did you like, not wake what up? Fuck? Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Because it was my neighbour. Oh, right, like, What okay. the hell? Oh, wait, yeah. was your neighbour climbing through your window? Yeah. I would have been yeah. like, wait a minute... Exactly, and he weren't like a slim fella either, you know what I mean? Uh, so I was like, oh, you should have got me bro up there. And he's gone, nah, you get up there, mate. You, you sort yeah, out. Oh, well, there you go. You're your an bro- adult. Your brother basically just like delegating. Yeah. Going, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Do you think I'm stupid? Well, he didn't, he didn't uh, get through the win. I didn't think he would get through there well, anyway, anyway, so he'd have to climb down. Well, always recommend getting a locksmith or yeah. someone professional to yeah. do these jobs rather than risking your own life trying to climb through a, a skinny window when you're a, a bit of a, a robust fella. Or have a neighbour have a key. Um, something like that. Yeah, anyway. or uh, yeah, stash well, one or something. Just join a cult and then there's always well, someone in. Do yeah, you know what I mean? True, there's always true, someone yeah. in in a cult. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, we're going to be talking about cults right about now. So, mm-hmm. you know... Uh, yeah, now we've kind of like, you know, discussed our woes of the week. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we've discussed quite a lot of different cults on the show, haven't we? Like, yeah. say, we've, um, we've Heaven's Gate, uh, yeah. the Jonestown Massacre. Yeah. Um, just to name a few. We've, we have, I think we've covered a couple more than yeah, that, actually. Yeah, I think we've had about four or five at um, least. You know, this one, um, Stella Mares. Um, yeah. is is an interesting one. And it, I love UFO cults as well. I mean, Heaven's Gate's a UFO cult. Yeah, that's right. Where, yeah. you know, they believe, you know, aliens, Halley's Comet, they were going to get on the tail end of it and yeah. wh- be whisked off to paradise. Yeah, yeah, right? But when it comes to weird cults, you know, obviously you can do a lot worse than the Stella um, Mar- Maris, um Church, yeah. which was based in um, South America. Basically, this was um, a Colombian um, cult, yeah? Yeah. The, we'll well, cult. a Colombian church, right? But it, they were a cult at the same time, mm, right? Yeah. Um, it was founded in 1989 by a man named um, Rodolfo uh, Perez. Uh, Rodolfo. Ooh. I love that name. Rodolfo. That's how he's spelled. Rodolfo. Just rolls off the tongue. Rodolfo Perez. Rodolfo. Yeah, so Rodolfo, um, he basically... I was saying it wrong. <laughs> um, he, he was kind of one of these... Um, he was a member of um, a Christian a genomic movement, right? So, so it's a Christian's fault. No, it's a Christian kind of 
premise, yeah, yeah right, around the call. Changes, it's a little yeah. change here But there. he was, like, you know, um, involved in this uh, movement, and he helped kick-start the project. Right. Basically, shortly after that, he could basically started recruiting people to come over mm. um, who were, had those beliefs as well. Yeah. Um, you know, the cult began and started making it a name for itself after it began um, basically saying that... There was a doomsday coming, like oh, it wasn't a cataclysm. Name, it was a there was something, like you know, coming along. But there'd been a lot of different cults happening. You know, we had the Jonestown thing, yeah, which was not that which was South America, yeah, yeah. right? Where they ended up building their commune and their mm. sort of you know um, promised land, if you like, uh, where Jones it, Jonestown actually was in yeah. South America. So, what is South America? Uh, South Africa? No, South, South America. America. Yeah. So, right, like, okay, yeah, you yeah. know, so. They were on alert for this type of behaviour, do you know yeah. what I mean? And so if any sort of, like, kind of cults or, you know, b- groups of people str- acting strange, they'd be on it, yeah? yeah. So oh, the yeah, authorities yeah. were looking, yeah. they were watching them from pretty much day one, right? Yeah, because Obviously, the everywhere. Jonestown was, like, back end of the 70s, wasn't it? Like, 79. Yeah. Whereas this started in, like, 89, right? So it's been a good 10 years since the Jonestown massacre, but... Yeah. They were still kind of like a bit wary of any sort of cult activity, yeah. let's just say. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so when they started kind of going on about like, you know, doomsdays and um, pronouncing that there was going to be a great cataclysm awaiting mankind, hmm. uh, they were, you know, red flags were, were kind Waving. of raised. Yeah. yeah. And the authorities were like, let's just keep an eye on these guys. Yeah, Ooh, we can't have sorry. This. I do apologize. Keep that's banging into me mic stand today. Um, so, you know, these, um, guys, they were all kind of doing religious, um, sort of, um, meetings. They'd kind of meet up on a Wednesday and a Saturday, do you know, like, and, you know, like yeah, a regular a church. A or little chin wag and a Most, bit of most of their activities bit. happened over the weekend, but a lot of the, lot of the members, mm. yeah, were very kind of like, um, su- seduced by the cult. Like, you know, so it's a, good a lot of these cults, saying. right, basically try and break you away from your family. So yeah. they'll take you on while you're kind of, um, you know, vulnerable or kind of... Yeah, um, you don't want anyone coming in and going, yeah. no, you so, don't want to do So that they'll shit. kind of try and brainwash you into yeah. thinking that, yeah. you know, families, they're not your family, you're, no. we're your family. Yeah. You know, we, you, you know, you belong here and like, you know, you're special and all the rest would, of it. On that, would you say... Then it gangs would come under the cult. Well, it's funny. Intre- it is interesting in, because the, the definition of cult is, you know, like um, a group of people who share a, a, an interest or, yeah. or an opinion, yeah. right? So, you know, you could argue like a chess club was a cult, yeah. But it's whether you engage in cult type activities, yeah. Good cult, like, bad cult. I mean, what is a good thing? I mean, a good call. I mean, have you ever read the book? um, There's a book called Join Me by Danny Wallace. No. And this is pre internet. So it was um, basically before Facebook, before social media, yeah, yeah, early 90s or mid 90s. This book, um, this, this guy writes this book and basically the idea was he put an advert in the local paper mm. um, the loot yeah so oh, we right. have the, the what is it the loot paper was like a classified yeah. ads yeah. Uh, paper it's like Green Tree now yeah or gum, gum tree, gum tree yeah, sorry, like yeah. Gumtree or Craigslist or something like that yeah. right and he put an ad up just basically saying join me right yeah. Um, asking people to join him and just to send him one passport photo of themselves right and why if they were ugly it was going to well, say no nah, no i mean no he was just a, like so he had like you know some they, it was a commitment they were making a commitment by sending okay. this photo yeah. and then you know they were joining him but they didn't know what for right so they were kind of like shit well what do we do like we you know and he had to come up with a reason because he started getting like hundreds, hundreds of people. people yeah and this is before social media, so yeah. like people didn't have the photographs online or anything like that. Yeah. By sending the photograph, it was like they were making a commitment to this this joining him. Yeah. Yeah. But up until like halfway through this, he didn't actually know what he wanted people to join him for. So it's obviously started a cult, yeah. But whether he used that power for good or bad was still like it's debatable, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. his decision. It's down yeah. to him as a cult leader. 
So he ultimately decided to use this power for good and created what he called the Karma Army, right? Yeah. Where they'd go out on a Friday and um, do good deeds, pay things forward. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, um, nice. help someone cross the road with the shopping, you know, these type of oh, things. Yeah, Just do a right. nice deed, right? Yeah. And I thought that was a brilliant concept. And like, you know, using your power as a cult leader for good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Just That's the type of cult I'd like to be in, yeah, right? Whereas the cults that you see in these stories, like this one in particular, it's it seems very sinister. And when they try and kind of brainwash you away from your family and say, you know, um, nobody understands you but us and, mm. you know, you've got to stiffen your wages into the cult for, you know, like basically your, your cost of living and all the rest of it, living on the commune, then it starts becoming really difficult for these people to break away from so cult victims like people who have you know been in cults and, and like managed to get away like, like not tom like tom cruise <laughs> well, he's in the kind no, of cult. i'd say more like kate, kate, katie holmes if anyone like, well, you know yeah, yeah, managed yeah. to break away and get free from this crazy cult do you know like i wouldn't say it was um you know very many do to be honest and when they do it's because a family members tried to kind of pull them away from it and try and like you know unbrainwash them, I suppose. Well, yeah, yeah, because they they obviously they they they're looking after their loved ones and like trying to. Well, this sure well this is, well, this is the thing because over the years, um, the police would get many reports from concerned family members who were worried about the loved ones once they'd you know completely been brainwashed yeah. by the uh, enigmatic church. Yeah. Um, and the cult leader himself, um, obviously, um, who was um, Rigolo um, Paré, yeah, um, mm. who went through to great lengths to make sure that his members um, severed all ties to the outside world, family members, all that sort of stuff, and, you know, basically said everything outside the cult was evil. Yeah. yeah. So people are like now you know, very dependent and rely, relying on what they get from the cult leader Rolo or Regello or whatever he's called, yeah, right? Yeah, so, so he's in, in the net from the past. Well, this is the thing, though, because they were already, like, work. They, so these guys who have came over, so what was he called? Um, Rodolfo, yeah, who helped set it up. Yeah. He's basically already has a background in this in this sort of cult, in this they've sort perfected. of... Yeah, and they've perfected it, and they, now they've gone, right... We're going to break away from the one we've, you know, it's almost a franchise, yeah. yeah. So he's broke away from this um, movement, this gen um, genomic movement, and then started it's his weird, own it. thing. Yeah. And it's almost like what um, Scientology did, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. In yeah. that respect where they go, actually, um, there's, there's money to be made in this. Um, yeah. I think like, if we take this idea, tweak it a bit, yeah. Get a few fucking gullible people pyramid or people. Scheme, yeah, 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 exactly. And this is another thing because you say about pyramid schemes, but mm. in the sense of information. Yeah. Yeah. So information being imparted on cult members, it depends on how much time they've um, invested, how much money they've invested, yeah. how much kind of. Family they've uh, lost. Well, basically, how many, how much they want it. Yeah. yeah. And it, they will. They have to prove to a higher higher point. Than yeah, the, it's almost, you know, when we were talking about Alistair Crowley and how mm. he's sort of like the magician's sort of guild or whatever, he, and, you know, yeah, yeah. being a wizard, mm. and, like, he'd have to go through different um, levels and he'd learn more and more and then he'd end up being a grand wizard. It's mm. almost like the Masons. Yeah, you I know, was just Like, they're say. very Masonic in yeah. that way where you're imparted degrees of information over um, your... Tenure as a mason, I suppose, or yeah. that that period of time that you're in 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 their group or a little club yeah. in the fruity little club. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, actually, you know, so the cult was kind of going strong for almost a decade. Yeah. Yeah. It was only when um a mother, concerned parent, actually, you know, got in touch, be with the police after you know they had loads of reports. But they never really found anything to be going on. Do you know what I mean? They were having meetings. No evidence. There was no evidence of the kind of foul play or anything like that. Right. Um, but until um, a mother got in touch with the police, basically saying that a daughter had told her 
uh, that she had to leave be, uh, because the cataclysm was going to occur. Yeah, right. So mm. imagine your kid comes home and goes, right, mum, I've got to move out. I'm going to go and live at the compound, right? Where well, you've been smoking. Because there's going to be a cataclysm, yeah, and yeah. it's going to wipe us all out, yeah. And the only way I can survive is by going and living here with these people because they know they know how to survive the cataclysm. Yeah, and we don't care about you. What would you say? Of- what would you say that they 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 would say? Well, how am I going to survive the cataclysm? How are you going to survive the cataclysm by mm. going with these people? Yeah. Well, it's aliens. aliens. The aliens it's can always save aliens, us isn't it? Because obviously these guys believe they were yeah. a UFO cult and they worship UFOs, right? Yeah. Colombia's actually got quite a high number of UFOs, and we'll talk about that um, yeah. in a minute. But like you know, um, she says to her mother that there's a cataclysm that's going to recur and that she had to go to a higher place to meet an extraterrestrials who would save them from the end of the world. Yeah. Forget so, about you, but it's going to save us. But I you mean, lot can fuck off. I mean, what would you think if that was your kid who you came ain't leaving. in? I'm locking you in your fucking bedroom. You ain't going nowhere. No, honestly, mate. that's what I'd do. Yeah. But be honest, that's I'd be it. like, no, you, seriously, you need to reevaluate what you're, what, you know, what you're thinking here, yeah. um, son, like, daughter. You, you ain't whatever. going nowhere near no uh, police or anything like that. You're staying in that room. Obviously, so. this daughter had been brainwashed to the extent that she she really believed this. Yeah, yeah and she felt that these aliens were the only thing that was going to be able to save her. Um, so, you know, they called it, uh, you know, the so-called uh, Stella Myra's Church, which described itself as a genomic organization held over um, in the Sierra Nevada <coughs> mountains in two groups. Uh, they group and um, they get together like, you know, in groups on yeah. uh, Fridays and the week over the weekend. So not Wednesdays, it was Friday. I do apologize. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are a franchise. Well, you know, you got to have the week. You know, it's a weekend thing. You've got to work in the week and bring you money into the, the commune, yeah, haven't definitely, you? definitely, definitely. Um, but basically, a police spokesman um, in in the resort, local resort, um, where most of the cult members lived, uh, said that they'd received reports that the group had uh, disappeared, right? Yeah. So, what had actually happened was, right, um, they'd got up, to go on their weekly sort of, um, you know, trek into the jungle yeah. where they do, um, like, spiritual. spiritual kind of meetings and, and uh, reflecting like and pra- praying and all the rest of it. And yeah. probably, who knows yeah. what the fuck they did. Yeah. Yeah, Hug right? a tree. Hugging a tree for <laughs> yeah. an hour, yeah. sitting on people's faces and smelling yeah. the farts. Yeah, I don't know, leaves. right? Uh, the leader of group told him that it, you know, the world was going to end on in in the August, right? Of um, nineteen ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, right? Yeah, and that they, they were preparing now to leave, right? They'd got the connection with the UFOs, yeah. right? They got the connection with the aliens, mm. right? And they were going to be meeting some aliens, um, and they were going to basically, you know potentially get rescued right yeah. um four of his relatives went missing yeah like okay. during this period right so don't know where they went um along with other court members um so this was the on the build-up right yeah. but in the june i think it was like the end of the june um 1999 a hmm. hundred of them um trekked into the jungle yes. and were never seen again but all together, there's all been together. more than a hundred people. Yeah, all together, them at the back. there was people who it went miss, who were going missing. Like missing, you know, yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, like I said, a lot of these people were vulnerable people, right? Yeah. So whether they were runaways or homeless or any number one of these any any of these situations that hmm. somebody might find themselves in, where they might be orphans yeah. or you know um, have no family. So they get kind of sucked into these sort of cults where they kind of feel safe and looked after, but they're also being brainwashed, right? So how do you know that there was, like, the, some of these people weren't going missing, like, months and months before? I mean, it was a decade yeah. in the making, and right. then all of a sudden, a hundred people at once go missing, right? It just makes me think about um, 
the missing 411, to be honest. It, well, it does, doesn't it? Does, it does, does, like going into the, in the woods and stuff. Well, this but, is I mean, a massive group. But it started with smaller smaller groups. Obviously, if like people were getting disappeared here and there, and then you know a couple of people, then you've got this big amount of people. What? So, question comes, what could be next? Could it be, let's grab a thousand people? Well, yeah. well, this is it. I mean, they were telling them all sorts, and two of yeah. the leaders actually told one of the young lead, a young cult, uh, a cultist, yeah. uh, that she was God's chosen one, um, and made her change her name to Stella. Yeah, right, to brainwash okay. her. Uh, she was convinced that she was going to make um, contact with flying saucers, um, so they probably all were right. Yeah. Um, whether they did or not, I mean, who knows? I mean, they could have actually gone and done it. I mean, we've we've talked That's about the, the Project Sphero yeah. um, incident, which yeah. is like we say it's connected with the the movie uh, Close Encounters of the Third the kind, kind, yeah. Where it's end. kind of just like a little kind of thing that happens at the end, which you don't really kind of go too much into. But you know, check out the episode; yeah, it's pretty it's, good. Yeah. Um, but like these cultists, they do kind of you know, draw you in in the weirdest ways. Um, whether, you know, they went up on a UFO, but obviously over that over the two years that this girl was there, they basically were talking about meeting UFOs, uh, being taken up by a chosen select few of these people being taken up by UFOs and saved. Yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering how many people were actually in the cult at this time, or was it the majority of these people who were in the cult went and disappeared, or were the a few of them left that were like we did we didn't get saved? Well, t- to be honest, I think she was up the hi- one of the highest ranking because there was a few suggestions some people who who were in the cult um, actually turning around saying no, nothing to do with aliens, nothing to do with. Uh, stuff like that. So, like you were saying before about, you know, going up the ladder, you get more and more and more information. Oh, so do you think they were so, like a hundred of the, the, the prime, the top, yeah, prime the top, members, if top you like? People, yeah. Um, I mean, like, when a hundred people or so simply go in, you know, on a routine spiritual retreat, yeah, and then uh, all of a sudden just, you know, disappear. Yeah, that's um, cool. Search parties actually went into the woods, into the jungles to try and mm. find them. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And literally no trace of yeah. these people was ever found. Even the commune that they were um, residing in. Before they left, yeah. They, yeah. They, they not been changed. It's literally like, a ghost town. Yeah. And it's not like it'd been set up like, uh, right, when I leave here, I'm going to, you know, make sure my bed's all nice and tidy and put me. Me, me pictures up here or whatever. Well, the difference, the difference b- with Heaven's Gate, yeah, mm. which was obviously a um, a UFO cult in itself. Yeah, they have the the get out of basically saying, well, once we pass away, we'll transcend, yeah, yeah. and we'll go. Our spiritual forms will go up onto like Halley's comet or onto our the spaceship or whatever. Leave. Our energies yeah. in, will leave. Where, so when when the authorities came and inevitably found them all in the tracksuits, you know, sleeping, sleeping mm. having a kip, Long then, sleep. you know, it's like there's a body there. We can kind of say without a shadow of a doubt, this cult is kind of like they've, you know, they've done the ultimate sacrifice and done the, done what they set out to do. Whereas, yeah, we Jonestown is a full on massacre. Yeah. Whereas yeah. this, it's there's no evidence at all. Yeah. yeah. To say that there was foul play. No. Yeah, there's no evidence to say that they weren't abducted by aliens. No. Right, yeah. And it was a good kidnapping area as well. It's a, a, a I can understand that, but you said we were talking yeah. about this earlier, yeah, right. A hundred people are wandering through the jungle. That's right. Right, if you've got some sort of militant army, yeah, that are in the jungle as well, mm-hmm. maximum you're going to have about five people patrolling your base, right, yeah. Mm. So... A hundred people wandering through the jungle and they come across one or two of these guys, like, patrolling. I think a hundred people would easily, like, overpower one guy with a gun or yeah. two guys with a gun. They might shoot if a few of them. Enough. Yeah. Well, they might shoot a few of them, but they'd still be more than enough to overpower them. But it's also about family and as I mean, well, because family and friends are going to be around them. Oh, I don't so know. So if I mean, you do the attempt of att- uh, attacking and it goes wrong and... Well, again, it's like, how do you hide a hundred bodies i mean if they've 
ran into somebody like you know that was operating in the jungles mm. and they were all executed well surely they would have found some any, sort of no. evidence that these people were you know um, something had happened whereas there is literally no evidence and considering that they were known to these parts of the jungle they would go there for weekly spiritual retreats yeah yeah so why all of a sudden would they have uh, trouble with people do you know what I mean? They yeah. don't seem like they're very kind of, um, you know, look out there looking for trouble. Well, there was no ransom either, so we they, they've well, taken exactly. that off yeah, the no table. Yeah, no ransoms, so, you know. But then, could they have been sold into slavery? There's no there's no evidence to uh, state that either. I oh, mean, we don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's literally, they disappeared. And even with the 411, usually a body, was, uh, if it's found, it's found... Uh, over a place where the search has been over and over again but then all of a sudden days, weeks, months later that place is actually where the uh, the person gets found and it's like whoa, hold on, what's going on there? Yeah, there was a story wasn't it about the young girl who was like t- they turned the back for a split second and then she was found miles up by the mountain or something yeah. like yeah, that's interesting you could argue abduction um, you could or portals you could you could um, well, I mean, considering, like, there Starting. was no cataclysm, I mean, we were talking yeah. about, like, the Mayan calendars and stuff to when we were trying yeah. to rationale this, Can this whole say. story. Yeah. You know, you know, there was the, the Millennium Bug. Oh, People were it. freaking out a bit about Fucking what was going to happen on yeah. the year 2000. So, I mean, the their rationale behind it maybe was, you know, they were kind of, you know, on the bandwagon of worrying about it all. But... Nothing really happened. So, I mean, what was this cataclysm? Why did they feel like they needed to escape? And did, you know, their escape somehow fix the cataclysm? I don't, I don't know. 2000, wasn't it? And, like, you know, uh, uh, Christ is coming back and stuff like that. But then you had the problems with it was all over uh, digital numbers. And then as soon as it hits 2000... Yeah, all the clocks would have been reset. And planes everything. would have fell out of the sky. Yeah, and was, like there'd be mass hysteria and looting and it everything. It just shows you how much they can... Uh, but, governments like can I say, fear. that didn't happen. So did they jump the gun a little bit? In terms of like, you know, they... Yeah, months before and Yeah, well. well, they had a few months. But maybe yeah. it was one of those, you know, like where it was like, you know, we've got this lift off planet with these aliens we can rather go now or we're gonna be fucked because like there's literally no other i mean we've been waiting for years for this oh they're still waiting but we've been sticking our thumb up thumb in a lift hitchhiker's style for 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 almost a decade yeah why Mm. is it that all of a sudden it's come now which is just around a couple of months before we needed them yeah can't wait another decade do you know no, what I mean? Well, you, you know, you know they need people, the people look for, for the ships. What do you, you know think I mean? that these people are now They're like waiting, uh, being watching like, you know, um, you know, like experimented on and any stuff like that? Any day now, any day now. Well, this is another thing. Do you think they might ever return? If they have legitimately gone up to a, Why another planet... Why would they planet, want to return if they thought that they were going to Well, maybe. Well, no, because they could have done a flyby just to see if Earth's still here. Or not necessarily, it could be actually about um, the destruction. I mean, like a virus, you know, well, going round. Maybe. And they, and they, now <laughs> they've left the planet, and now whatever this virus, or if you're still to come, comes and goes, they could come back, and it wouldn't affect them, and they could actually help us later on. Well, in kind of... I mean, you, you are the right there. Yeah, potentially that could be the thing. It's all yeah, speculation. It's idea, yeah. They did go missing. If you've got any theories about where they might have gone, Butlins. we'd love to hear from you. Butlins, <laughs> yeah, Alton Butlins. Towers, yeah. um, you uh, know, Walt Centre Disney's Parks. Place, yeah. um, they might have just got really high on a load of cocaine. Yeah. It was Columbia, wasn't yeah. it? Um, or found some really nice coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice um, coffee. You know, they could have been could've a number done. of reasons. Yeah. There is, there's ne- there's um, well, uh, I mean, I are you yet. in a church? Do you attend a church? Yeah. Is it one of these churches? Is it mainstream church or is it a small church? I want to know because there are 10 surefire ways to know if your church is actually a cult. Oh, right. Well, right. quite a lot of these are going to be ticked then. We'll see. We'll see, won't we? Well, we number will. one, yeah. yeah, the leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Is the leadership opposed to critical thinking? So 
an independent behavior. Oh, right. Yeah, I could think that of... is a big one, yeah. right? Because obviously, like, you know, if they're kind of dictating what you do and say and how you dress and what you do, yeah, yeah, then that's not a good church to be in, I don't think. I feel like, you know, if he's God's love and you know, all that, you should be or just, nothing. you know, celebrate your individuality, yeah. right? You know, that's that right. I feel like that is one of those things. If you're you're not with us, you're against us, sort of policy, that isn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah, I agree. Well, number two. Hmm? Um, is um, presenting a cult um, as a church, um, as a family, or a place of belonging. Yeah, we talked about that, yeah. you know, like trying to draw weak and vulnerable people in yeah. by, you know, saying, oh, you know, you belong here, we'll look after you, you know. They're, you know and even sounds, bringing family actually, and friends That sounds as well. nice, yeah, right? I mean, so most... That's almost saying you've got to be really cynical in this world, yeah? And people who are acting kind towards you mm. might have an ulterior motive, mm. but that's not always the case. But, obviously, do be wary if it's, a, a, a like, a um, an organisation or a, or a religious word. sort of fanatics yeah. that are going to try and change your mind about your beliefs, basically. Um, number three... Um, elevation of the leaders uh, uh, against the uh, standard me- congregation, yeah. Well, so you yeah. know, is the are the leaders like held on ridiculous pedestals that you know they are seen as pope deities or gods? Um, pope, pope, and then man. Under the, under the pope, you've got what bishops, and under him, you've got. So Other you're ones. just ticking boxes for Christianity. I am yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, everything you say I just now, say I'm every mainstream religion. Well, yeah, this, I agree, this ticks but I know more about every... Christianity than uh, other religions. Um, right, okay, anything number four. Up, though, I say. Um, Go on in. Four. Leaders have alternate rules, yeah? Mm-hmm. So, opposed to what is expected from the congregation, so do as I say, not as I do, philosopher. Oh, yeah, but that's... Yeah. that's I mean, that's all like... All powers, really. Again, the Pope. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. exactly. It's like, I'm the Pope. Yeah, I do what no I want. No one else is allowed to wear my big I'm not allowed hat. to retire, but you know what? I'm going to retire. Right, so... Get another one in. Number five, um, yeah. demonisation of anyone opposed to the rules of the leader. Oh... So that this happened That's in all religions against well, again, other religions. Well, this happened in like um, Jonestown, where you know people started speaking up, yeah. but then they started getting like punishment yeah. um, for you so, know having yeah. alternative opinions. Um, you know, th- you know they were then shunned by the rest of the community. Yeah, for oh. basically being traitors. And you're hitting everything there for a government at the moment. Well, organisations, yeah, not, yeah, uh, cult, cult, culty organisations. Um, number them. six, um, expectations of um, abnormal account time, uh, abnormal um, account time spent during church, um, you know, related activities. So you got to be harsh so basi- Well, so basically, you know, most people go to church on a Sunday, yeah, yeah, and they'll go, you know, and they'll respect that, and they'll have like their time to, you know, like congregate with the mass and yeah. like you know ma- mass congregation and all the rest of it, mm. and you know that's the pretty much the gist of it. Yeah, you don't have to go; it's not mandatory. Yeah, but if you choose to go to church, you usually go to a service on a Sunday or another day in the week, right? And unless it's a dirty old man in a frock, so um, you, you know if do. you're expected to um you know con- you know go to church every time and if you don't make it you'll be getting phone calls or you Whipping know yourself they, and... they're expecting you to do a lot of functions or um, you know give money yeah. or property yeah. yeah to the church then that's red flags that's something that you need to do if it's unexpect you know um, you know un- don't feel right unacceptable please. Or abnormal amounts of time, yeah, that they're expecting you to um, put into the church, then that's probably... That's your some, life. That's, that's your, be life. your life. Yeah, yeah exactly. Your life yeah. nothing but the church. So you need to kind of keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Um, number seven, um, so empathise, empathising... Uh, sorry. <laughs> empathising em- special... Um, oh, right, so... It, it, Imp- improvising special um, doctrines, yeah, right. Mm. So um, if they've got a scripture, yeah. right, and they start changing do. stuff and improvising stuff to suit them, yeah. So or wouldn't you say that uh, 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 um, about the Quran? 
how they've changed it from a decent book to uh oh it was it a good read to, uh yeah, they, they actually, changed it too much they made it too much hollywood changing it for the uh, that's what it is it's to too actually oh uh, no what well, i'd say to... it was more i'd say a, a better example of that mm. is um church of england yeah oh yeah doctoring doctoring christianity for your own ends is like you know well i don't agree with half of this so let's scrap the half i don't like and we'll fill in the rest i'm forcing yeah. it in africa that, that's places like that as well that's pretty the much early days. yeah um what that is that it's kind of um you know improvising making it you, you know your your Basically, if somebody comes up and goes with yeah. something like a loophole, then you can kind of close it quick without yeah. any sort of hassle about, you know, worrying that it's not going to fall in line with the scripture. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Um, number eight. Um, so, basically, pushing the end times, right? So, basically saying that there's going to be a cataclysm we're or uh, we're, we're all doomed. The end, the end is nigh. Yeah. Yeah, that type of behaviour, obviously, is scary. It's fear-mongering. It's kind of yeah. like mass panic. And people Useful. will fall into the idea that you are, um, by being in this cult, that you might they might have the answers. Yeah. Yeah. When a lot of the time they don't. Right, they're making it up as they go along, basically, yeah, as we just said. Bullshit, right, yeah. bullshit, yeah. Um, so, like the vast, vast majority of cults have, like you know, exceptionally strong opinions about the end times. So they will usually use that to kind of push What's their narrative and try and get you on board. Kind of funny you say that because uh, they would have to believe it so wholeheartedly to push it that far across to uh, a, a decent human being who's uh, sensible. Yeah. So, well, if um, here's another one, number nine, uh, using military terms or monikers. Yeah. Ooh, yeah so having like you know a hierarchy. Yeah. Like you've just said that about the Pope and having like you know yeah, he's, um, he's got well, his he's got his minions under him, minions under him yeah. and underlings. Yeah. yeah. If there's some sort of like hierarchy where they've been given grand titles. Um, yeah. Again, like it's like the Masons. It's almost like you know. I would say the Masons is a cult. It's just more kind of like um, a, 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 a kind, a of, kind a of more behind the high brow. We we enjoy a brandy and we talk about today. Yeah, well, I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd have to say that most cults don't want to be really recognised until they've either doing what they're going to do, um, or uh, which it's mostly short term. I think the short term ones are. The ones that you know we see, but the longer term ones are the ones that have put more thought and more um, uh, uh, perspective of well, what I the future is going to bring. If, you, if you've joined a church and your minister's going by, like you know, the uh, super awesome fucking whiz kid super awesome yeah. whiz kid fucking humongous nutsack. Yeah. Um, you know, with his crazy fucking title, then yeah. that's a red flag. I wouldn't I wouldn't join that church. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, but if you if you turn around and said Oh, this just, is the just new reminded pope. me of that Simon Pegging black books where he's like, In six years you could have been deputy vice sub assistant, but you're not. You're uh, you are a wor- around the floor like the worm you are. But on the alternative if I turned around and said that's a pope, then you wouldn't question it. Just because of the just because well, he's got status, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's the Pope, man. Yeah. It's like he's Pope, man. Yeah. Anyway, um, an emphasis on number ten, even an emphasis on the separation from your family, yeah, uh, from the world, have, from anyone, have. any family, friends. Yeah. They just, you know, they, you know, you don't need those people now. You got us, yeah, yeah. You got us. Why would you need job, anyone man. else? Yeah, you, you, got, you got me and people, Taylor, man. yeah. You don't need anyone else. You just come and no. listen to our show if you're feeling blue. Oh yeah, yeah, and and so that's the, that's what they do. Language. Honestly, that's what they do. I mean, that they'll say, you know, if you're feeling down or you've got something you need to get off your chest, don't talk to your family. They don't understand you like we do. Come you and tell come me and talk to us. Talk to us. Talk so this is this is another later. thing that they use. There's an emphasis on the separation from anything in your life other than the church. Mm. Yeah, so. If you do feel like you are in a church that kind of at least ticks half of them boxes, I'd reeval, do yeah. a bit of a reevaluation, yeah. maybe. Uh, but this is the thing though, because it seems super difficult to get out of these things. But it also seems uh, like like it hits on a lot of religions. 
You know what I mean? And we're not saying get out of that, but out of the smaller shitty cults. Well, who, who are looking at maybe you at are a it. cult survivor. Maybe you've been in a cult. Maybe you were a cult leader yourself. Get in touch. Also, maybe you were one of the people who went up in, you know, the spaceship. And, oh, yeah. Um, and come back maybe down. you come back down. You uh, know, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. what did you get up to? Wouldn't mind hearing that story. Um, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be an interesting oh God, I keep story. banging me bloody headphones into this bloody mic stand. Like it's doing me head in. It's got a little spring on it, so it goes twang. I don't even know if that picks up, but anyway. Yeah, um, well, there you go. So, um, if you've got a cult that you would, you'd think that we'd be um, interested to cover, get oh, yeah. in touch, yeah. um, or any story, really. Um, also, you know, if you'd like to leave a comment or just get in touch about what we've talked about today. Please that would be fucking awesome. Right, well. Well, we've got some news uh, coming up with the headlines of the week in the worldwide news, haven't we just? Yeah. I think we should get on with that about now. It's the news. And as per usual, we've scoured the internet and the papers for this week's uh, world news. And I don't think it'll disappoint. Oh, no. Oh, usually um, we find something or other to talk about. Um, first, I've got this, what's it, um, story about four-day weeks. It's kicking in now, isn't it? People are having four-day weeks. I think, it, yeah, I think it's good. It's like back in the 70s, like, um, I'm not that I know, I won't be born then, but apparently they did have a four-day week back then and a three-day yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, world's um, largest four-day week working week trial. Um, apparently reduces stress and illness yeah. amongst employees. Totally. Um, I kind of felt like that after, you know, you know, the working from home thing. Mm. Do you think that people need a bit more flexibility with the work life? Do you know? Because when I first Hell started yeah. working, it was like, you know, expected to wear shirt, tie, suit to the office. Yeah. yeah or whatever, wherever you were working, you had to kind of be a bit more kind of professional yeah whereas right. that kind of went out the window and everyone started being really casual in the office I think that, do you know what i mean yeah i think that's i think that's just sending wrong signals to be honest a bit more lazy a bit more late it's not that it's well. lazy i feel like people are more productive when they're <laughs> able to be a bit more themselves when you're all buttoned up and co- corporate does that I mean, some people like that and dress like that generally, but I mean, do you not think that, you know, if you if you don't like that and you're a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy well, you and you have to wear a shirt and tie you? for work, does that kind of hinder your, your pr- pr- productivity? Well, does that mean then uh, a soldier or a copper or a fireman? No, because that's beneficial. Thing. That's a uniform, yeah, yeah. right? And so it stands. it's like, oh, yeah, again, it's like, oh, you know, if we were on a football team, we wouldn't know who we were passing to yeah. or whatever. But it's like, you know, at the end of the day, if you need sp- specific apparatus and you turned up to, a, you know, as a fireman wearing trainers, then you're probably not wearing the right kit for the job, yeah? And you wouldn't get sent in. But, like, you know, you need these certain jobs, you do need to follow procedure and yeah. wear the uh, pro- required uniform. But... An right. office environment isn't that type of place. I think, like, if you're wearing, you know, a pair of trainers, jeans, and a t-shirt, it's gonna not. It's gonna make you feel comf- more comfortable and maybe more productive than you would be if you were, like, you know, in a, in a, an uncomfortable, itchy suit. Yeah, that... but our position is to uh, to. Uh, it's, it's kind of like an authority position, kind of, but it's like a salesman. If a salesman comes to your door and he's wearing a, oh, he's he's old wearing fashioned, a suit, isn't he? he's old fashioned. I you know would I mean? not buy it off him. I'd think he was like some sort of, uh, you know. Well, all right, then what if a scally comes to your door I'm, with a tracksuit and like a, 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 a load of shit in his pocket? That happens in the black quite a lot. Bag. Yeah, that happens quite a lot. I, scally's knocking on your door, going, "I've got a lawnmower. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to buy a lawnmower or a or a you know a scooter or but, something?" It's one of them. I, th- I, I think you. Uh, I like a good suit. I like a good tie. In uh, you know what I mean. I, I, I do. I wish I could. Well, we're wear going off bit off topic because I mean the thing was about you know four day weeks. I mean the trial ran for six months in June last year, and, and the research was um, you know compiled by Cambridge uh, University and the United U.S. Boston College. Um, it was a non a non profit 
um, organisation sort of thing, do you know? So nobody, yeah. you know, it was just a study on this four-day week. Um, the results saw um, a decrease in anxiety, uh, difficulty sleeping, and burnout across all, all the staff. Um, so 39 participants of employees, um, re- um, sorry, 39% of employees reported being less stressed. Yeah, I can see that because more and more companies, and it's been going on for and years. And this is the thing, more, I know you were saying about us. it being a uniform, that that whole thing, and, you know, being kind of professional and all the rest of it, yeah. but if it's all about, uh, would you rather be... Would you do that you, going Would you out? rather wear a suit to work to be professional and stressed out, or would you rather be, you know, um, relaxed and, you know, feeling like you you're going to do your job more capable or confidently because you're relaxed and feeling like you yourself. If I got a suit on, I'm feeling more um, more well, relaxed and up for the challenge. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm in my jeans and or jogging uh, bottoms. I'm that, feeling. Well, you're, that's you. Know you what, that's I'm your feeling. personal opinion yeah. in this instance. So there you yeah. go. Um, let us know what you think. I feel like a four yeah. day week, as long as I was getting paid the five day week money, yeah. would be fine. Yeah, you d- yeah, they've done uh, trials of that as well. Yeah, and that's worked out uh, uh, pretty well as well. Well, there are more companies fair, fair that are taking enough. it on. Any, anything you've seen in the news this week that you wouldn't mind talking about? Uh, 15 Minute Cities. Have what was that? This 15 Minute Cities, where they're trying to cut. Because I'm finding that um, there are a few people who are talking about it, but there are far less people who, who know about it. Uh, now, in the UK, they're looking at um, cutting up cities and putting uh, a journey for like 15 minutes across that you... Um, Wait a minute, how do you cut up a city? Well, they're going to put it in the sections. Go, uh, it's like, Oxford. Oh, again, again, we're doing a Blue Peter moment. It's like, make sure yeah. you've got a parent or a guardian around with scissors oh. to cut up the city. What do you mean the cutting up a city? So it's no longer... So we're in Manchester, right? Yeah. How would you go about cutting up Manchester? Right. You uh, it, it, Basically, like a pie. Pie. Yeah. Wait a minute. You can only go so far when you cross a certain line in a car at the moment. Well, they do that with zones. They do that on the tubes and the trams and stuff. Like, yeah. so you're going into zone five, zone one to two. You can only buy a ticket between those zones and travel but within you, those zones. But you're only allowed to go across there so many times. After, if you do it too many times, like let's say you need to go to work every day and you go across there and you pass uh, the limit, you get charged. You get a fine. What, for travelling to yeah, work? Yeah, there's loads no. of protests about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look it up. Check it out about 15 minutes. So the, the pie slice minute, cities um, are coming soon, apparently. Um, We've all signed up for it. Even Manchester signed up to it. I'm not sure I agree with that. I feel like, you know, I I mean, I'd mooch about Manchester quite often. Yeah, I mean, you'll I'm, be... I'm fucking all over the show. Yeah, you'll get charged. You would end up getting charged. Is that in cars? Is it's it just for ca- cycle? Is it just for moment, motorists? Because I'm a cyclist. I mean, is it going to be like they can't? They cannot monitor how, yeah. where I go in the city and charge me accordingly. It's well, just not possible. This Unless is where I'm digital ID is going to come in. This is where go, I think you'll find you crossed over the Manchester Salford border um, yeah. too many times this week, Mister Duncan. Well, this is where digital ID comes in. This is another reason why they want digital ID so they can track your movement. So they, uh, anytime you do pass there, wow. you will be, you'll be fine for it. Too much, too much. Check Not happening. Um, I've out. got this story here. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, it was a lifelong dream oh, for, yeah. for this young person um, who wanted to meet a sloth. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the meeting took a fucking drastic turn last month oh. um, in the um, Saguan... What is this? The Sagawa uh, Township. Right. Yeah. Um, where in, when a teen girl was about to ma- realize a dream of meeting a sloth and um, and get you know at this local exotic pet store, I think she was mm. going to buy it. Yeah, um, right. but it bit her. Oh no! It went all fucking ape shit. <laughs> fucking bit her. Slap it or something. Oh, may- imagine that you've had this lifelong dream of meeting a you know having a pet sloth, and um, then it, it just goes and you. bites your face off. Well, you know. Some animals like us, some animals don't. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, well, they. That, I just thought that was a funny story. Not funny, but, you know. Um, a story. A story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which doesn't lead me on to the next story, but I'm going to go in with it anyway. Okay. Um, a giant blob. 
Oh, right, okay. Yeah, this is a giant blob of seaweed, which is actually oh, twice yeah. the width of the United States. <laughs> yeah, Fucking right. Hell. He's taking aim for Florida. Shit, you sure it's not that new island of rubbish? Well, it might be. No, it's, it's seaweed. Five, it? It's seaweed, yeah. So, you know, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, Chinese sushi. restaurants and sushi, be a lot bars. Of sushi bars. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. loving yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, but an impending seaweed um, mount fucking continent um, is coming for Florida, apparently. So where's that come from then? How's I don't know. Grown, uh, so it's so coming massive? off the, the, the southwest coast and, um, you know... They've actually, what's it, thought maybe, I don't know, were they thinking of burning it? What? Uh, well, you can. You c- could you? You can, yeah, you can insert with certain chemicals, yeah, you'd be able well, to Well, so this it. is a giant seaweed bloom, yeah, so large that it can be seen from space, yeah, yeah. and it may be heading towards the Florida Gulf Coast. Um, the the bloom is around uh, 50, uh, 5,000 miles wide, yeah, so twice the width of the United States and is believed Shit. to be the largest in history. Uh, drifting between um, the Atlantic coast of Africa and the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the thick mat of algae um, is basically just... It, it's good because that, it, it actually say. absorbs carbon dioxide. Yeah, it's right? one of the best ones, yeah. So... It and is quite a, a good thing to be in the sea or yeah. be there, yeah, at the time, at the moment. But like, leave you know, alone, there's nothing. If it's well, not no, if it's going to crash into the coast, then it could cause problems. I'll so, you know, the, coast, the giant bloom um, as, you know, disastrous consequences if it oh, gets God. too close to the shore. Cor- oh, coral yeah, reefs. Who for those who were, uh, who, who were sunbathing? Who no. Who sunbathe there no more. Corals. Right. Um, marine life, okay. uh, for instance. Um, yeah, they start if, if the algae goes over yeah. it, then there's no sunlight, which means that other life suffers because of it, and then the, it can create um, and release hydrogen sulfide, yeah. which is obviously ne- negatively impacts the air and the water, causing respiratory problems in people in the surrounding area. And then so and then we end up with red algae. So it's not worse. just all about like you know we sunbathing. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually true. um quite important. It's quite important. What do you reckon they're going to do with it then? Um, I don't know what they're going to have to do with it. I mean, obviously, it's not hit the Florida coast just yeah, yet, yeah. but, I mean, it's obviously it could be, it's and it's, it could be on its way. It better not um, be a storm. Hey, a storm might throw it up. Oh, mate, imagine Florida <laughs> imagine. will just be covered in seaweed. Well, yeah, imagine if it just flung <laughs> it into the middle of America. Bang, everywhere, seaweed. It's fucking everywhere. Fucking, I mean, yeah. it's twice the width, so, I mean, you know, you never know. Well, um, yeah. Anything you've seen this week? Oh, yeah, TikTok. TikTok. TikTok, TikTok might be banned. Well, they keep the. You see a lot of adverts at the moment, just assuring parents that kids can't use it, and it's like you know you've got to be um, re- the, the, every account under a certain age is restricted and all the rest of it. Oh. So they must be coming under fire from a lot of people. Um, you know, TikTok's one of those things where I reckon there is some really questionable content on there. Yeah, they, they, well, it's, it's about the Chinese government being able to get your details, and um, it's the case that TikTok have said they have. Oh, so it's nothing to it. do with anything like, you know, um, what people are watching or what the content is. It's more about kind of your data. Your data. Yeah, right, it's okay. more on that protection because. I thought um, they had their own TikTok. No, no, it's because it's a Chinese company and. Every Chinese company, if the Chinese government want want your details, all the details of the company, they can get it at any time, and oh, that right, is suppose, where the yeah. issue is. Most countries now. Uh, well, have this was the it. problem with that. Um, what was it? Huawei, wasn't it? Because yeah, like it was a, a it was of, a yeah. government owned company, yeah. so yeah, they were able then privy to your information. A- any at the time. any company that you're with and uh, a Chinese company. Uh, has investment within it can get all your data to the Chinese government. Basically. Well, you don't want that, do you? Well, no, that's why um, uh, t- uh, Ten Cents is uh, being looked at at the minute because uh, they they tried it a different way, but now they've done it investments and they invest a lot around the world, and so them companies, the Chinese can government can actually take the data. Well, yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. just, you see, this is it. Don't jump on but fads. I've never joined TikTok. 
Well, I've never joined TikTok, but MPs in this country had, and they've all been told Oh, now. there you go. They're all watching funny dances and stuff yeah. like that on TikTok. And they're not allowed to do it anymore. They've got uh, all of them. Uh, anyone who works within the government have to get rid uh, of their TikTok accounts because um, there, there are private information, you know, a little bit of details, photographs. You can get a lot of details out the background of a photograph yeah, and that. You can, so, actually, yeah. you know... Uh, it's one of them that uh, they're, they're looking at the security of us at the minute uh, as in the government, but it's it's questionable should we ban it because there is a lot of people who use it. And is there an alternative? I think someone should bring in an alternative in quick. Well, there's always an alternative. And these things, as we've re- come to realise with these social media platforms, they, they fizzle, fizzle out, yeah. 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 So, I mean... It was a big hype about fucking Snapchat for a while, you know, Facebook, yeah. fucking um, MySpace, That's yeah. Um, what was the other one? There was loads of them. There yeah. was a couple There's of them, like, of them um, down, you know, they? even ones that were around around about MySpace's time that had just disappeared, like, and you'll never see them again. So You're generally getting reinvested with another company. Another company, yeah. it's a new take on yeah. it. Yeah, so there'll be a few that'll stick around because they've got so much investment, but, yeah. like, look, a lot yeah, of them yeah. get bought out and, you know, yeah, uh, Google merged, and merged into them, yeah. You. yeah. So, um, you know, it's one of those where I wouldn't worry too much about that, but, like, you know, if you were on TikTok, then, uh, you know, I think they should ban it myself. Then, you know, just be ago. a bit more careful about what you're putting on s- online, generally speaking, or whatever social media platform you're on. Totally, totally. Um, totally so there you go. Um, we talked a couple of months back about this story about um, a pigeon mm. that was found in a prison yard wearing a backpack. Oh, yeah. Um, another one has been found, hey, um, guard u- the guard union say. Uh, mm. Say second pigeon with backpack found in um, a BC prison. So, you know, getting the packages, using yeah. imagine, imaginative ways, um, you know, a there's Vancouver a world, a pigeon way. wearing a tiny empty backpack has been captured inside a federal prison in British Columbia. Um, it had an empty backpack, so I don't know what that suggests. Yeah, that the, the uh, guards have taken it and gone, I'm taking that, mate. I, f- I think the, 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 it, it, the delivery was successful, and the pigeon was probably just having yeah. a chill, you know, after a long flight. Before yeah, it returned true. home, yeah. and that's when they captured it. So, you know, um, is it something that they need to keep an eye on? I feel like prisoners will always be imaginative with how they get uh, contraband into prisons. Yeah, you're never going to stop that. So, you know, I feel like this isn't even an imagine- imaginative thing. It's quite old school, if you like. You know what? It could be a black that... Um they're using that, but actually they're doing something oh, else. They've got a tunnel and down the other cloak wing. and dagger. Yeah. They're, so they're basically like using the pigeon oh, as give a it away. Shit, I hope they don't come from me. All now. I need to do is <laughs> stick a backpack on the pigeon and they'll all go nuts. Yeah. That, that's basically yeah, it, exactly. isn't it? Yeah, they, exactly. They're all go wa- watching for I've pigeons. seen porridge. We yeah. know the dance. We know the drill. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's it. I mean, um, you know, the pigeon was found um, in the prison on February the 27th oh. while, the, uh, while the first bird was caught. Um, on the prison grounds. So, I mean, they found, it, like I say, this is a second one now. So, you know, let's see if they find any more. I yeah, think they it's probably pre- will. You, I mean, <laughs> pigeons, pigeons have been used in that respect for, you know, d- generations, you know, in terms of message delivering or delivering packages or whatever. So, yeah. nothing yeah. new, is it? Yeah, no, no. We used to use them in the, uh, World War One. Um, anything you want to talk about? I found this really cool story. It's not a cool story. It's an absolute fucking travesty. Okay. Um, this is a furious motorist who was fined £650 after a council worker painted a disabled bait around his parked car. That's bullshit. That's entrapment. That yeah, is right? entrapment. So a furious motorist has been accused, um, has accused the council of painting around his car. Or maybe he's just trying to pull a fast one. You know what? Say, so yeah, wasn't he there do. when I drove up. Could do. It's, it's, uh, it's not small money. Well, he left his BMW. Um, in um, a car parking bay oh, near, his, BMW fo- driver? near his yeah, home in the southwest charge. of London um, in September. But when he returned, um, I mean, come on. So he's left his car there for, from the 18th of September, and when he returned on October the 6th... Fuck oh, off! Yeah, right, the 42-year-old was shocked to discover that his car was now in a disabled bay that had been created in his absence. Well, you know what? 
You're only supposed to be there for a little while. A car park is where you fucking park. So you know what? Fuck it. Let I mean, based on those, based on length. those, that length of time, yeah. he's been on holiday, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah, he's taking the piss. He's been on holiday and he's parked up in southwest London. Yeah, thinking my car will be all right here. Where's yeah, hardly any driving spaces as it is now. So he's been stung with obviously that was originally the it was a hundred and thirty pound penalty. Oh, it did. Um, but obviously he's had charges on probably for you know leaving there, leaving it there without a blue badge. You know what? I'd double it. Fuck it, double it. He I won't mean, fucking do it again. Yeah, oh. I mean they literally look like they've spray painted it around his How car. They put underneath. What they didn't? They just oh, basically right, like yeah, yeah, they just basically like went around the car. Cheeky bastards, but yeah. I'll, I'll give them their dues. Oh, well, fucking hell, they'll pull a fast one, won't they? Yeah. But that car's... Maybe it was on the docket to do the work, but there was a car in the way, way so they just the thought, fuck it, we'll do it. Oh, yeah, if he's been uh, a long time, they might go, oh, wait for a day and it, the car's going to fuck off. Well, but then it doesn't. Bam, you get charged. Any, <laughs> any, anything else you've seen? Oh, yes, Putin's in trouble, or is he... Well, because these war crimes, isn't it? They've put out a warrant for I, his arrest. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like, are they going to catch up with him, though? Are they really seriously going to knock on his door and arrest him? Well, there's been an uh, international uh, arrest warrant put on Putin for uh, moving thousands of kids from uh, Ukraine uh, to Russia and then basically putting them in care homes yeah because they're basically trying to strengthen their numbers yeah and basically say oh no you're russian kids like yeah. or whatever but um we heard about this really early on in the mm. ukraine conflict where they were um you know all these orphan children or people escorting who were people they were out, escorting, escorting them over Russia. the border yeah um so i mean so what's he doing getting done for kidnapping i suppose uh yeah, yeah, it will be. Yeah, kidnapping. But the thing is, uh, America was shocked about it. Um, but they ain't in the ICC, which is the International Criminal Court, and neither is Russia. Um, so the question is, what can they actually do about it? I mean, look, the Queen, we are in um, the ICC uh, commitment to him. But the Queen had an international uh, arrest warrant sent on her. But she, he, she could leave the country. Tony Blair did, else. didn't he? Didn't they all have? I mean, I think I in think terms Tony of has. war crimes, I think a few people have. Oh, should have, you know, yeah, should have, yeah, would have, yeah, could have. Yeah, there should have been a lot of them. They didn't, or yeah. you know, or they've never caught up with them. Yeah. So you know, it's uh, it, it, so the question now is, what what are they going to do about? Uh, is he actually going to go to court in the end? But after the Yugoslavian war and the caught the uh, culprit for that that took quite a long time so um it's questionable again it's questionable. one of those where you know um while he's in the kremlin he's pretty much untouchable so he's not going to be able to um be you know arrested well, and not like I say they're not going to be able to walk up his drive and just arrest him well yeah and it's funny they've uh, actually uh, ramped up he's doing a uh, military training at the minute with iran his uh, russia and uh, china at the moment, they're doing uh, training together, which is funny. But another thing with uh, uh, Putin this week was about the Russian aircraft supposedly had sprayed fuel over uh, a drone, American drone, um, and then set fire to it and it crashed, basically. Right, And okay. there's film to this. Was film so does that? What does that? I mean, it's ramping up again, isn't it? I mean, it I think is. like there was talk of um, a sort of thing happening around spring where he'd pulled all of his troops back, Putin, because yeah. it was winter. Yeah, and right. um, they were uh, planning a spring assault or something. But um, yeah, the assault. Sh well, the, uh, it's looking like uh, it, it's not looking good for the Ukraine at the minute because they have lost a few positions, but. And they're looking at a, a, a fight back, and they're actually hitting drones and that into Russia as well. So it's getting a little bit more complicated as well with other countries deciding. Uh, it was it Georgia? We don't want to join Russia, or we do want to join Russia. And so there's loads of arguments at the yeah, minute yeah. as well still to come. Well, we'll see what happens as that well, progresses. That's it. Um, I found this story about a Florida man 
mm. um, who held a masseuse at gunpoint oh. after man- after demanding um, a happy ending. Oh, yeah. no. Uh, and he could be related to you. Timothy Paul Taylor <laughs> no, uh, was no arrested <laughs> arrested nah. for holding a masseuse at gunpoint whilst demanding a happy Don't ending. Don't know the fucker. Uh, no. Luckily for Timothy... Um, even though the gun was una- um, even though the gun was unable to help him succeed, um, after being told no multiple times, Timothy told the masseuse that he would kill her if she didn't comply. Did so she, you know, did she uh, act on it? That's <laughs> no. The victim was then able to run to the neighbor, um, a neighboring business, where she dialed nine one one. And by the time Timothy had uh, fire, uh, fleed from the scene. Um, shortly after that, the police began uh, their pursuit and discovered uh, Timothy's car at his mother's house. Um, ultimately, his mother gave him up. <laughs> good <laughs> so girl, like, good girl. He's done what? That's oh, he's upstairs. Fucking, fucking go and yeah. arrest him, his little pervert. Yeah. Sick of oh, that, Timothy. Yeah, that's, well, that's a, that's a good result at the end of I it. I mean, at the end of the day, right? I mean, it would have been ironic if it was one of those uh, adult masseuses. Yeah, like, yeah. and it's like, what? that's what we do here. It's like, you don't put the gun away, Yeah, son. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because Epstein's gone, on he? So he's, he, he, all his clients are like... Going to different places, trying Shit. to do different things. What do you think, Timothy? <laughs> Timothy doesn't look like the type to have been um, in Epstein's little black book. To oh be no, honest. but he, he might have been his hero. Maybe he <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? Um, well, <laughs> the, the, have you seen the talking about Russia? Yeah. By the way, um, there is a a campaign oh, that Russia has, have started up now. Oh, um, it's to it's to recruit youngsters. To the cause, right? Yeah, fuck it. And you'll never guess where, what platform they've chosen. What to, um, you know, spearhead this campaign? Go on, tell me. Uh, Pornhub, <laughs> or that that type of well, thing. Well, the basically mm. the the campaign is to stop masturbating and go to the front line. Uh, Russian basic Russian groups have basically launched this. Porn site recruitment drive. What, what? So you've got a choice. You can either sit in your bedroom, have a wank, or go out and get shot. I'll yeah, stay, stay here, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Russian mercenary groups, uh, Wagner, have launched a short-lived recruitment drive on Pornhub, urging men to stop masturbating and get to the front. Yeah, uh, yeah the ad re- um, was basically um, reported on multiple Russian um, tel- uh, telemarketing channels. Um, has already been taken down by the porn site. Fucking hell. Like, well, we're, 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 we're rude, but we ain't that rude. Wagner lost, uh, uh, you know, all the prisoners a couple of, uh, about a year ago, uh, were let out to go and work with him. Well, uh, majority of them are, uh, are dead now, apparently. Well, an- another, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, apparently this is just one reason not to troops. go, isn't it? There's an estimation um, of uh, one million. Well, another tagline for the campaign read, uh, take the other barrel in your hand. Well, uh, well, you need two hands for uh, a rifle. Take take your other barrel in both hands. Yeah. Well, it's Russian. It's probably lost in translation a little yeah, well, bit. Well, yeah, know. there is that. Um, I mean, would that be the sort of campaign that if you were, uh, you know, jacking off, and you just saw, like, you know, Putin come on your screen. That's why we yeah. have, a, that's why we yeah. have an X bottom in the co- uh, uh, an X in the corner. Click, fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's one of those where it's like, you know, if that came up, I mean, it would be a big turn off, I would assume. Yeah, but then it, you, you're, you're talking on kind of uh, uh, brainwashing. I mean, it is. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's not do. so much. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the Uncle Sam, you know, your country needs you yeah. sort of thing. Well, did Recruiting it? people is always, you know, Top Gun. The yeah. movie Top Gun is a fucking massive recruitment yeah. tool. Yeah, There's right. A lot if you of look at it drive as a as a, what it is, and if the stats prove it, after mm. the first Top yeah, Gun movie, totally. the amount of people who wanted to join the yeah. Navy and the RAF yeah. went We're through throwing the roof. them away. So you know, I mean, it's it's it, these tactics do work in the same way yeah. they do for cults. Yeah. So you know, yeah. Um, whether you kind of you're susceptible and you you see Top Gun and kind of like think that's the life yeah, for that's me, that's me in that cockpit. <laughs> then it's, it's up to you. I mean, whatever. Yeah, but it never come true. It's more the volleyball <laughs> scene, isn't it? It was like that's the life for me. Yeah, that like that. volleyball <laughs> on the beach. Yeah, anyway, I've right. Seen playing. Right. So, anything else you've seen? Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, well, they've been doing studies lately on uh, nut allergies. Okay. Um, and 
uh, now doctors are prescribing for young children um, to actually start having a little bit yeah. of uh, peanuts no, in there. You see, that is it. that's just common sense, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. The big the the thing that people do when they have an allergy is they go. I've got an allergy, and yeah. they shy away Give from the thing that they've got an allergy from. I mean, yeah. not to say that some people have lethal nut allergies, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's some people who, you, if you put anywhere near them, they will die, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's, there is a flaw to that logic, but yeah, there is, if you've got a, an allergy that you just get a little bit of a rash, yeah, mm. or something like that, then... Mm. Don't you can deal with, you that, can deal anyway. with it? Yeah. You can basically. I had the same thing with strawberries, right? Yeah, right. and I love strawberries. They're gorgeous little beasts. Yeah, right. But yeah, they are. If they you come be. out with a rash when you eat them, yeah, then some might think I ain't gonna eat strawberries anymore. No. Yeah, right, because I come out in a rash. Mm. Well, no. If you carry on eating strawberries, then you will you will get over it. Your body will create an immunity yeah. to and like a defense against that. Yeah. It's just your body's way of coping with it, right? Because it's, it's been a shock to the system, if anything. I think my little sister actually, when she was born, had um, a milk allergy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She was allergic to milk, mm. right? Which meant that she had to have special milk formula, right? Mm-hmm. But over time, you wean them back onto it, and now, yeah. You wouldn't think there was that's an it. issue, do you know what I mean? And that's that's, that's the thing is, and I get Don't where they're coming jump. from with the peanuts, but I do believe that there are some people that have, you know, lethal. And if you yeah. try and oh. wean them on it by even giving them the slightest little bit, that would make them really. Oh Ill. yeah, obviously you know that I mean? kind of that 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 then goes to the the medical stage of you know you take this drug, take that drug. But as it stands, I totally agree, and it made me actually think. Uh, in a doubtful way, kind of, um, on could allergies um, have been a purposely um, uh, uh, thing that they actually deliberately brought into the system that people will end up having. Because allergies, there is so many allergies now, but there is so many chemicals out there that create allergies. And yet it doesn't seem to be the, uh, the idea of stopping using them chemicals to stop the allergies it seems that bring more in and create more allergies yeah because yeah, it yeah. helps certain systems it, it, if you think about it it helps economies it's funny actually because i mean i've spoke to a few people because i never used to have a uh, hay fever as a kid mm. and over the years i've developed allergies to tree pollen and stuff and i end up having to take you know antihistamines in the summer yeah. because I get headaches and stuff from it now, and I never knew what it was because I never had those allergies before. Uh, is it the environment we're living in? Is it like the pollution and stuff like that that's making it us more? Yeah, because you got kind it in of your food, your water, susceptible your air. to the effects of stuff like tree pollen, and we're more sensitive. Especially, in I the don't, cities. I don't know if that is. It could be because obviously emissions from cars and carbon yeah. monoxide. And we and already all knew shit. this beforehand. You know what I mean? We already know about uh, like you know when uh, a new product comes out, the governments already have reports like. Yeah, and we have certain percentages, like all your food, there is a certain percentage of insects that can be in well, there. Yeah, but we've talked about, like, even the genetics of food and stuff, and you don't know what you're eating. But, yeah, well, yeah it's, it's having a safe level. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, and the thing is, it's like, you know, so you've just said there, there could be insects or pesticides on your food, mm. but it's the those um guidelines are in place so that we don't have harmful levels but realistically so there shouldn't be any no levels, levels. Really. yeah exactly yeah. So, and that's know. where we're going wrong because we keep adding more instead of taking it back it, it's affecting us over time is yeah. what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah. Right. oh yeah totally. totally um i saw this story but this is my last story before we get into nasa news yeah i'm out of mind um so this is um a new scam that you know people need to be um aware of all right so this is a story of an elderly uh, louisiana a man who was fooled into getting into a car with strangers, then taken to um, to a money ATM machine um, and take out funds. Um, the bizarre incident that um, may be the latest scam targeting um, well-intentioned older men and women. So Possibly. there's been a lot of this on the internet. Now they're actually going out and doing it in person. 
So two scammers who claim to be from an overseas um, charity, mm. yeah, or a local charity, but they would come over to work for them, yeah. um, approached the victim and convinced him to get into the vehicle um, and take them to an ATM. Yeah. Um, yeah. They accom- uh, they basically accompanied him to a local bank where he withdrew um, an undisclosed large sum of money um, under false pretenses. Uh, so, you know, obviously they've, they've obviously given the chatter um, they've called the incident bizarre, but obviously said that people need to be aware that if people approach them and, you know, ask them these type of things, you know, I'll give them the sob story yeah. of, of whatever they just, because they're very hazy on the details, but obviously people are getting well, the older generation. Yeah. Well, but they're too trusting know. in a lot yeah. of ways, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. you know, um, I've seen a couple of these scam artists where they've got them on the internet and then they've, they've ended up go into a Walmart and they've stayed on the phone with him while they've gone to a Walmart or an Asda or another shopping centre to buy gift cards. Yeah. yeah. Because they've been blagged into thinking that they've been given a refund that they haven't yeah. been given and they need to pay that money back. Yeah. So it's like the, the, the people are kind of too trusting. And But if you are approached and, you know, asked to help, uh, you know, a couple of charity workers out, just be aware that there are could be a bit more to it. Yeah, because fraud is our number one. I've actually asked the guy on the on the YouTube channel, but Scammer Payback, if you go on YouTube and check out Scammer Payback uh, YouTube channel, um, they're very good at kind of um, out in these guys and, you know, wasting the time, basically, because yeah. the way they see it is baiting these people online, yeah, and wasting their time and keeping them on the phone for a good hour and a half where they think they're going to get a good result from this person when they're not, yeah. You know what, I is, should have done that the other day. It's Well, it's a good practice because at the end of the day, while you're winding them up and not giving them, giving them bullshit information and yeah. saying, oh, yeah, I'm on the way to the bank now, they're not scamming somebody who is vulnerable and, you know, so baiting these people is fun, but yeah. it's also, you know, um, you know, st- Wasting their time in the sense that they can't be scamming somebody else. Yeah, yeah, because I think I was trying to be scammed the other day with a phone call, and it was, it was a case of, my name's John, but he didn't sound English. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, I, yeah, and he, he, he wouldn't, he, we don't want your date or, uh, and all that kind of stuff, and he, he kept asking questions, questions, so I turned around to him and said, uh, where did you get my uh, info f- uh, from and what info have you got? So he said, oh, I've only just got your number and, like, your name. So it was like, uh, okay, well, how come you're ringing me? Because I haven't got any insurance on that anyway. Yeah, they always, so they always try it. It's just info? cold calling. Yeah. It's like since yeah. PPI went out um, and that got stopped, Yeah, they've run out of stuff to fucking cold call you about. So yeah, it's like it's... now they go... Um, I'm just ringing about the accident you had like last year. Oh, I've and had you're like, wait a minute! Of them. I didn't have Fuck an accident me. last year, and they yeah. go, "Oh, my mistake." I have but, wound a couple of them but ones. Up. If if they hit on a guy who goes, "Oh yeah, you, what? When I broke my leg?" and they go, "Yeah, yeah, when you broke your leg." Well, well, tell us a bit more about that, will you? And then they, you know, they hook you. It's like chasing yeah. ambulances, isn't it? Ambulances, oh, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, because I told one where I said, "Yeah, a man fell me through my sunroof." <laughs> and, <what I> claimed, <laughs> and they went, um, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> so it was like, oh, it was meant, it was meant. But yeah, some of them, if I remember, I try try and keep them on and just keep them fucking busy and wind the fuck out of Yeah, them. that's funny. Um, but, I found, yeah. right, so well, going into NASA news and uh, space news, mm. um, a scientific salad for astronauts in deep space. Oh, right. Yeah, so okay. this, this is a salad that's been concocted with oh. ingredients that have been chosen for nutritional value as well as how easy they'd be gr- to grow in space and, w- yes. and with limited limited room and resources available. Yeah, um, I was going to say, yeah, because uh, uh, over the years, haven't they, they've been trying to grow um, uh, plants and, like, seeds out there. So if they can, now they're going to try and make food up there. Well, this is it. Well, they've, can, they've got a salad already. The salad consists Good. of sev- uh, seven ingredients. Um, soybeans, oh, nice. poppy seeds, All right. um, barley, kale, yeah. peanuts, unless you're allergic, oh, yeah. sunflower seeds, and sweet potato. Oh, sweet. It's got potato. Yeah, on. so Ooh, um, all in careful measured amounts um, that can be grown in small enclosed spaces on a spacecraft. 
Men, um, so unless, you know, next generation you're thing, gonna, gonna get sick of that quite quick, I can imagine. So they need to come up with more than just one salad. Well, yeah, but they, they haven't got room for a cow yet. <laughs> I know, yeah. We well, want can milk. Make beef, can't they? We want yogurt. They we can, want steak. But they can make beef in uh, a lab now, or so-called beef oh. in a lab. So I think no. on space travel, that's going to be the stuff that's going to go because you, you no, haven't got the no, room for anything else. We, we, I'm, I've got, a, I've got a campaign against this stuff. Yeah, I you can't uh, be I, saying, I, I, yeah. Oh, but it's all right in space. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Different roles, mate. Remember when Different we had roles. the space um, ice creams? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you liked them, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, they were all right. Space tasty, food. Actually. I mean, yeah. it's usually quite rehydrated or dehydrated. So, I mean, these yeah. salads, being able to have fresh produce on the space station or in space, it's, it yeah, is kind it's, of revolutionary. Yeah, so, well done yeah. on that. They've yeah, not I've actually that, so. they've not actually grown anything up there yet. Yeah, they've just invented. They've just put a salad together and said, Here if, we go. "If you were in space, we'll this is the type of thing you could potentially grow." Yeah, maybe yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, they, it must have been proven that some some of them you can grow out. Uh, oh, totally, in, uh, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure they will be. Um, so, anything from NASA me? related or oh, food related? Yes, or right. both. Well, um, new news has come through now. You do you know about the uh, term uh, planspermia? Yes, it's um, it's the where they kind of it's sort of the seeding of a, of a planet, isn't it? Yeah, it's basically asteroids and meteorites hitting into a planet and coming along with it, bringing genetic you know, material that can and, spark yeah, sort of water life or, and uh, to bring the yeah, life. Yeah, it's and almost stuff like, like sort of um, fertilization of yeah. the planet, yeah. it, it almost, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and um, scientists who have been looking into our four point five billion year cycle of the planet. Yeah. Uh, there was four massive uh, meteorites that had uh, crashed into our planet. So they've been to the centre of them and did uh, a load of testing and on other sites. What, they just had them knocking around? Like they were in someone's back garden? Well, no, they know exactly where these pl- uh, these places have been hit by calculation and uh, scanning of the planet. Oh, so they've not gone to the meteorites, they've gone to the craters. Yeah, right, they've okay. gone to uh, the, the centre of uh, these craters, so we can work out and get more data on the materials and stuff within them. So, a, Yeah, because I can imagine that the, there might be stuff there that, you know, isn't anywhere else. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the university, some students from the University of Maryland have... um, Make good cookies. They do. Concluded that um, panspermia would not have worked in our case because asteroids and uh, meteorites don't carry as much water as we uh, suspected. And don't forget the planet is 71% water. Yeah, I know, but that might just have been the case that, like, that was dormant life on that meteorite, and it needed the water that was on this planet yeah, to sort of regenerate it or reinvigorate it. Yeah, but even if we like were... Like a refreshing, we were, cool drink on a hot summer's day. Even from that, even if it was still being hit now by asteroids and that, it would still not okay. uh, make well, that Well, that, may, that, that kind of rules us. that out, but also, but you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that we, the life on this planet wasn't sparked by life off another planet in terms of, like, you know, um, they could have been refugees and come to this planet and created, the, you know, sparks off life or, you know, a number of things. Oh, yeah, but it just doesn't or explain it could just be water. Like, well, no, but I mean, planet. it does because it's just a c- case of that our planet, when it was forming, had two gases that were really, r- we were really rich in two certain gases, which put together creates liquid water. Yeah. When you think about how the universe is formed and, you, you, know, you know, we speculate about having planets made of methane or planets made of gold or diamond yeah proven right? it too, well they've proven it mm. yeah so it naturally makes sense that, uh, that you know it's just a mishmash of just crazy elements that were happened to be in different quantities in different places and it happened that earth happened to have a good mix of 
you know, the two gases that go to make water, and because it was so kind of isolated as a planet now, that those, they did form as oceans and they did form as kind of bodies of water rather than being, uh, remaining gases on as they were, do you know what I mean? Well, their, their studies are ter- uh, determining that. Um, so I believe uh, the water was here when the planet was formed, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, but that can't be because well, it, it was is. molten lava. Well, no, it wasn't. Because, it, like, if you think about it, like like I just said, these planets there that are, are, are fully methane planets or fully, like, you know, um, rich in other, other well, gases no, they, and that, other chemicals. Ground. No, it's nothing to do with the ground. It's a case of atmospheric sort of um, pressures and stuff. So, basically, you get your basis for your planet, which is your rock, right? So, you've got... A big bang, which expels all this crazy matter and rock and shit and gold and all the elements out into space, right? And then some of these elements start kind of forming together um, and sucking in, because now they're getting a gravitational pull, right? They start sucking in other elements, gases, um, creating atmospheres, right? And if they happen to be where Earth was being formed... A high concentration of like hydrogen and um, oxygen, then you know that gravitational pull would, you know, draw that those elements in, and we'd create a body of water because you, we both know those mix and create water, right? And don't so, forget, we've got four times. So the I don't know. I mean, well. ge- generally, that would make sense to me. Um, you know, in terms of primordial soup. You know, they wouldn't need it. I feel like the planet wouldn't be barren, yeah, it, to be able to generate a, a soup. You know what I mean? Soups are generally liquid. Yeah. So, in terms of what you were saying well, from, there about how we arrived here, maybe it was just sort of natural selection and the, you know, genetically, um, you know, um, well, I'm right. Uh, on, on, the stronger will survive and, and fucking Darwin and all the rest of it. So who This knows? was just a study on how the water got here when, when uh, with all the data that uh, uh, the scientists have got, they can't work out. And panspermia was the idea that, uh, that set it off that it actually would work that way. But... It's not working out that way, so they don't know. Well, exactly no, that's more where about like where come life's from. come from. But I mean, I be- I think that we've got so much water on this planet that it would be more likely have been um, here when the planet, or due to the planet's formation, in the same respect that there must have been a high concentration of uh, methane around Venus, yeah, because that's got quite a, a methane-rich um, atmosphere, yeah. So it's rather generating the methane from the planet and it's bubbling up and coming from the planet itself or it's drawn it in whilst the planet was forming and, you know, trapped it in the atmosphere of that particular planet. Well, I would have thought she, uh, uh, Megan um, had actually uh, checked out the... Um science for i don't know i'm speculating on... but i mean like yeah, in terms of yeah i mean i would never have just logically thought thought to myself oh um the reason why water's on this planet is because it was brought here by a meteorite because it's too much of it yeah it's like there's generally no way but that was that, a scientific basis but they couldn't it just isn't they just possible. Needed to prove it. Water doesn't multiply. Water doesn't. No, like, but it carried on on the meteorites, carried through the uh, space, and then landed here, and it it brought a, a certain amount of water because of the enough. coldness and the ice and uh, uh, yeah, and totally, like but not and enough other uh, chemicals, but not enough to form the oceans. Well, yeah, they were here already, but that was uh, that was the original idea. Okay, I but don't. Now know, it, I'm not now sure it, about that. Now it, it, it's looking like it's changing the questioning it again. I think that's more about like life and bugs and molecules. You know, like more like sort of um, how the the meteorites couldn't have possibly carried. Um, you know genetic information from space to earth 
and survived and maybe that's why it's out of the question and that's why we, we, we we're not entertaining it as a theory for, for Earth and not saying it wouldn't work on other planets but like maybe the conditions here aren't we've got our own ecosystem which means that we're quite <coughs> good at, prof- at, at creating life here <coughs> on Earth which yeah. is ev- inevitable and ev- ev- it. you know inevitable mm. I can't speak tonight inevident yeah um, evident right and um so maybe that's it. That's it. I mean, it's just the nothing could survive that transport, you know, that travel. But like at the end of the day, the I feel like the idea that it was carrying carrying water to the planet. It, there's too much water on this planet to be brought here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It needed to have been here just in the formation, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, I found this story, Rolls Royce. Um, I've been um, secured funds to develop a new nuclear reactor oh. for the moon base. Oh, right. I thought you actually, because uh, they've just been uh, uh, granted for the new submarines as well. Well, they're doing bits okay. at the minute. Rolls-Royce have received further funding from the UK Space Agency to develop nuclear reactors for the moon, uh, moon base. Uh, the project will uh, look into how nuclear power could be used to support future bases on the moon for astronauts. Good. That's really interesting, really quite... I mean, Rolls-Royce... I thought they'd be looking into that by now. They probably have, but, I mean, they, they, you know, they've probably drew up the plans, got it all ready. Yeah, That's how they've got the funding. The is all now they're like, um, yeah. we're going to need a couple more million just to get it off the ground. Like sort billion of thing. Or trillion. Billion, trillion. Yeah. Uh, scientists and engineers at the British company um, are now working on um, a micro reactor program uh, to develop uh, technology that will, which will provide power needed uh, for human life to be sustained and to work on Earth's uh, natural satellite, the moon. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah, it, it's it looks like that could be you know something that we would have people living on the moon soon. Ro- yeah, Ro- Rolls Royce have been doing really well over the la- last 10, 15 years. They've been because they did have a, a a little dip, but they've been doing it really good for the UK. In, in well, I feel like since they've like you know, I mean, I don't feel business. like the cars they're a bit kind of lavish and a bit kind of like out of. Most yeah. people's price range. Well, they're in a dip, but this and that, aren't they? It's the aeronautics, it's yeah. all the stuff they do in the background, yeah. which, I mean, the cars are flash, but, yeah. I mean, it's like... And expensive. You know, with I feel but like they're well just worked. a side project yeah. in, in in engineering to compared to what they do with uh, aerospace and, you know, flight and... Yeah, they're not All afraid to go into certain things. I mean, now they're creating nuclear reactors. Yeah. So there you go. As long as it's got the Rolls-Royce badge on it. Yeah. That's yeah. all right. UK. Um, there you go. Smashing it in the UK. Oh, yeah. Um, that's what we need businesses at the minute. Any more spacey-style news? I've got one, no. one or two. Well, I've got this stun- uh, stunning photos that oh. show UFO-shaped clouds floating over Hawaii. Oh, it's, are these what I think they are? But oh, right. It's actually just like pareidolia. Yeah. Well, not pareidolia, but that sort of thing, you know, where you see what you want to see, basically. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I've it, seen a few of them. It, is, it does look like clouds, but the way they've formed, it does look like a really big that UFO. Image, um, it, yeah. So a UFO has been uh, struck over Hawaii. Um, at least it was seen that way, do you know. Well, from pr- certain angles, people yeah. might have seen that and thought it was a real UFO. And it's good uh, they're looking up. But, yeah, it was spotted um, a UFO-shaped cloud breezing through the sky, the bizarre, um, yet yeah, um, strikingly UFO-shaped cloud uh, stood out bright against the clear blue sky. Say, beautiful. Yeah. That, that, I bet it was nice in Hawaii as well. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Nice weather. Last story. Um, space suits for the return to the moon. Yes, we need hard cases. Well, they've revealed them. Have they? Yeah, they've got them now, yeah. so thin or fat? Oh, they look groovy, mate. They're like kind of like a charcoal grey sort of um, colour with um, orange and blue accents. Yeah, they look quite cool, actually. Um, So the new generation of spacesuits for humanity's return trip to the moon has been unveiled by NASA. Um, The novel design comes with um, new features... To support astronauts as they, um, you know, conduct oh, scientific beyond. experiments on the lunar surface. Good, good. Um, the prototype is said to be better, a better fit uh, for female space travellers also. Good. And NASA hopes that it, uh, they'll be 
updated and the suits will be ready for the um the artemis free mission to the moon in 2025 oh yeah can't wait so can't that's exciting wait. um try and post some of these photos on the instagram actually because it's quite a cool spacesuit. do you, you reckon know. they're gonna film it all the way i hope so because i mean we've seen now we've seen a lot of stuff from space that you know where they've you know yeah, traveled they do up like to, to the close ISS the window and stuff. every now and again don't they, um, I'm hoping that it would see uh, we, it'd be kind of like one of those events that everybody would gather around the TVs to watch like the 1960s um but that'd be the question would it be real or would it not be we'll that just go through it all again one yeah. way and we'll be there to yes. uh, to go into the conspiracy when it happens yeah um the spacesuits yeah, um, worn by the US space travelers have not been fully redesigned since 1981. Yeah, they were old outfits, man, but... Bulky as well. It's about These time, These yeah. look like they could do a bit of, yeah, like, manoeuvring, a bit of action, fight some aliens with ease. That's what we need. That's what we need. What we, we don't want. need big, clumpy things on us. We need, like, nice and tight. Um, yeah, so, yeah. But, um, you know, Spandex. obviously... <laughs> well, the thing was, is they, they had to kind of, like, all um and ah whether they could ever send female astronauts to space because they didn't yeah. have the kit... Yeah. That was well fitting, um, you know, suits that were crucial to prevent, like, you know, um, the toilet, the worst case scenarios yeah. and physical harm. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, like, obviously, in, um, they needed to revamp it. So, in 2019, NASA had put in place um, efforts to kind of bring a female team of astronauts to, you know, do spacewalks and stuff at the International Space Station. So, they had to start obviously developing. A more female-friendly spacesuit, yeah. and I feel the like they've done. Uniform. They've probably done that now. So, uh, NASA oh. believes the new design will overcome the problems that meet some of the challenges posed by uh, the astronauts, um, and the uh, specifically the Artemis Free mission. Um, so well, that'll be due to lift off on um, in 2025. Good because uh, they they did have quite a bit of issues with the female uh, suits. If I remember rightly, that the two females needed to go outside and they only had one suit. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, yeah, so, so they have had a, a few little issues, but yeah, they what they need to make them unisex, all of them. Well, so it's you, not a case of that. It's, it's what's well, you know. I mean, the physic the physicality of a, a man and obviously, a woman. Obviously, yes, suited you to know, the person. The yeah. suits need to be tailored. To, to be, um, you know, it's like you were saying about, you know, wearing your uniform, yeah? yeah. You need it to be functional yeah, as yeah. well as comfortable, yeah? yeah. So if it, if you've got a spacesuit on that's made for a man and it's all baggy and saggy and f- not fitting in the crotch yeah. and, you know, you're, you're all tripping over yourself, well, if you how are you supposed there, to you fucking do your fast. job? Can't do a spacewalk in a saggy spacesuit. Well, I, oh, I don't know. I don't it's tripping know. over space. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there's been some astronauts and cosmonauts and that have actually gone up and then done that with like a baggy suit. <laughs> like, oh, well, spacesuit's a spacesuit. If you if you is need it? a spacesuit, yeah. isn't it really? Yeah. Well, there you go. That's the news for you for another week. I uh, yeah. hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got anything you'd like to add, make sure you do and send us an email or a comment. Yeah. On um, whichever platform you choose. Um, well, yeah. No. We'll be back for another episode next week. We will. I feel like I'm fucking like losing my, my speech. Losing your speech. Again. Um, well, we'll be back next week for another episode. We and um, yeah, we're available on all podcast podcast platforms. We so wherever you get your too. podcasts, you can get it on there. Most people, when you say we do a podcast, they go, well, you're on Spotify. Yeah. You're on iTunes. Yeah. We are available on all these pod, pod, uh, podcast platforms, yes, as well as YouTube. We and on our website at never neverastraightanswer.co.uk um, where you can Come find along. downloadable content. There's loads there. The latest episodes, the blogs, all sorts of news and other stuff to keep you entertained. It'd be amazing. Um, you can help support the show by going over to Patreon oh, or yeah, the please. website and donating. Uh, plenty of ways you can donate. You yeah. can go over to... Did you know Anchor is no longer Anchor? You are. Anchor is no longer Anchor. What is it, Wanker? They've changed now to uh, podcasts, Spotify for podcasts. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, like, we now upload to Spotify Direct by right. uh, the sounds of it. Sweet ass. So, like, we, um, have nothing changed. You can no? still get us wherever you get us. 
Uh, but you can go over to our page on Anchor, Spotify, and donate through there as well. Oh, yeah. Or the website or wherever you are do. Yeah. And um, we'll be back next week for another episode. Sure. Um, so make sure you tune in for that. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your mum. Tell your milkman. We'll be back. So that'll be it. Peace. It's... I've been Gaz. I've been Taylor. We'll see you next time. Ciao for now. Peace. Out.